All right, our next guest warns the market is looking frothy once again. Mike Wilson is Morgan Stanley's chief U.S. equity strategist and CIO, and he's here with us in Miami. Mike, it's great to see you here in person. Yep, thanks for having in me. In the sunshine. It's nice. Um, the Fed has no reason to even give an olive branch to the bulls at this point, does it? There's no gain from that. I don't think so. I mean, they've done a lot of hard work. They've done the hard work, right? They've got rates to four and a half percent. Like, why quit now, particularly with the froth now coming back? As you said, the financial conditions are actually where they were a year ago almost when they started raising rates. So there's no incentive for them to do it. I, I, but I have no idea what they're going to do. Uh, the way I look at it is this is an event that's been, you know, thought about now for four months. This is part of our call in October mm -hmm. that the Fed may pause after this meeting. So we've had the rally at this point, right? And to me, it's simply the market needs to get past this event, and then we can price the fundamentals again, which are deteriorating. Financial conditions are as loose as they've been. You just said that. There's a truth to that, but yet the market doesn't seem to acknowledge it. So one would think, given what the Fed has done for the last 14 months, financial conditions be as tight as they've been in a decade. They're not. Speak to that, and what is the market not seeing? Well, I think the market did adjust to that last year. We saw a major adjustment in, in multiples and the bond market, of course, because the Fed did tighten financial conditions. But now the market is looking past it as if all the bad, the fundamental news can be overlooked. And the fundamental news is deteriorating significantly. We're seeing that earnings tonight. You guys are just discussing that. We think it's going to continue to be the case. And once again, once this event gets past us and people realize if it's not cutting rates, there's no more, you know, heroin, so to speak, then we're going to price the fundamentals, which are clearly deteriorating in our view. So, Mike, you know, we've seen this cycle before of the last year where investors, you know, estimates come down into the quarter. They're not as bad as expected. We see stocks kind of rally out of it. But again, you know, we've seen them pull back and make new lows. When you think of the rotations that we've seen over the last few months, money out of mega cap tech into financials, into industrials, into um, you know, energy and like, is there risk there in these stocks that look actually reasonably priced? But if we do bottom somewhere like 14 times that's you know, earnings, they may look really expensive. Some of these industrials. Yeah, I know where you're going with this. I mean, the cyclicals probably are more risky now Correct. than the growth stocks, right? The growth stocks, a lot of them had their you know kind of come up its last year with the financial conditions tightening. Now there's this sort of narrative that China's reopening, inflation's peaked. We can look through the valley here and, and start buying early cyclical stocks. I think that's a real mistake given the degradation in earnings that we think is coming. Also, do you, are you sure or how sure are you that inflation has in fact peaked? I mean, we just got Spain's inflation numbers on Monday. I never thought I'd be talking about Spain's inflation <laughs> numbers, but it, it, they went back, inflation went back up. Right. And that's going to make the job of the ECB, which meets later this week too, right. a little bit harder. Well, and there's so many other cross currents. We talked about this earlier today, right. right? With China reopening, okay, isn't that directly in the face of, you know, fighting commodity inflation, for example? I mean, gasoline prices are up 30% over the last month. Mm -hmm. We're seeing other commodity prices spike up. So it's making the Fed's job harder, which speaks to your point, Guy. I mean, like, why? Like, why get off the train now? Like, if things were crashing and there was all kind of distress out there, I get it. But that's not what's happening. So there's no incentive, as you, as you said earlier. Yeah. Tim, you got a question for Mike? Yeah, Mike, um, and I, reading your notes, you talked about the negative operational leverage, and I think that's a big part of the earnings story. Um, but, you know, here we are, have AMD reporting today after the bell, and what we're hearing from at least a lot is semiconductors, so you just talked about cyclicals. It, you can make an argument that these folks are you know, giving you the clearance to say through the March quarter, through the June quarter, um, we're kind of at our bottom. We've, we've, we've remedied inventory. What's your call on that? Because, again, a lot of these leading indicator cycle stocks have already undergone a lot of pain. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, but we think, you know, first of all, semiconductors never really went through the recession, right, because of the nature of the pandemic. There was a pull forward. So they never really, they actually had kind of two cycles in one. So we actually think that the, the damage in that space in particular is going to be ongoing and the margin pressure will persist. And this is a theme we think is going to happen all over the economy. It's not just tech, by the way. I want to make this clear. It's, it's other areas, too. We're seeing negative operating leverage in financials. We're seeing negative operating leverage in some of the industrials. We're seeing it in, in, in the consumer, for sure, where the over-earning was the greatest. And this is, a, this, is a, this is just something we think is happening, which is that every, nobody saw the inflation coming. They all benefited from it. And now they're underestimating the negative operating leverage cycle. That's what our model is telling us. we got to go with our work. The fundamentals, I think, ultimately will decide how low we go. Your title is Chief U.S. Equity Strategist, Mike. But earlier today on the panel that we are both on, you said, you know, look elsewhere in terms of equities and look at bonds. 
Yes, I'm that's, basically that's the underselling my product. Yeah. Right, right. But that's, that's, right. that really goes to the heart of all of this, right? Yes. That this is an extraordinary time for you. That's right. I mean, and, and look, I do the asset allocation for all our wealth channels too. So we're, we, I do look across the capital structure. And our title of our report this year was the year of yield. Now, that doesn't mean there's not risk still in some of the longer duration bonds or, or credit. Our markets aren't going to have a tough time if we go into recession, okay? But the sequencing is always the same when you go into these slowdown periods, right? The Fed tightens, rates go up. So you go to cash first, then you go to duration, then you go to credit, securitize, and then eventually you get to equities. And it's just like we're such an equity culture. Everybody wants to put the equity cart at the front of the horse. That's just not the way it works, and it's a mistake. For you, what is the signal to be putting money into equities? Is it when the Fed eases again? Well, we did put money into Asia. Okay, so right. like this for is U.S. A, equities, yeah, I mean. yeah, for U.S. equities, I think it's going to be a combination of where we think the earnings now reflect closer to reality, and valuations reflect that too. It's a, it's a two-edged sword. So the Fed will be part of that story. But I think the Fed will probably be cutting rates long after the market has bottomed. That's my general view because the Fed is going to have to hold firm. I think they're going to do their job. Jay Powell is here to, you know, make sure he gets inflation down. And as you said at the beginning, guy, I mean, there's no incentive for him to get off the train too early. That would be a mistake. Yeah, Mike. Thank you.